Hi there, this is a kitchen scale bought from Tesco, which I have of course because it wouldn't work. As with most of these types of things, it was just the on off button that was the problem. I'd assumed it would be one of these type of things whereby you just have a piece of plastic with a circuit board and underneath on the circuit board, oh, I don't know if we can see them or not, there are pads. Uh, circuits and these then are connected together by these bits of carbon on this bit of plastic. Often these bits of carbon don't work very well so my dad in his wisdom used to cut out a small piece of aluminium foil, stick it on there and then put the thing back together again. I thought that would be the problem with this one but in fact it wasn't because this is a better quality and actually has proper push buttons on it. So after replacing the push button, that's this particular one here, hopefully we can see that it now works so all it was was the button. If we take the thing apart what we've got then you've got the sort of plate on the top, a big metal plate, don't know if that's important for keeping stray voltages away from the strain gauges. The top then just lifts off, I've taken the screws out of course, uh, and then what we've got is the battery in here, uh, the sort of 9 volt battery which I'm not very keen on because of the fact that the two connectors are close together, so the best thing I think to do is just put a bit of tape over the top so it's not going to short itself out. Where are we now then? Well, what we've got then is, of course, the power coming in. Now, one of the problems that there could have been with this, don't know if we'll be able to see it or not, but the cable is actually cracked. So if I want to uh, look at this, uh, let's put some glasses on so I can see it. What we can see is that the cable there is clacked cracked and the bare metal is exposed so really I need to put a new one of those on as well. Uh, so that needs replacing. If we look at the actual thing itself what we've got here then is the mechanism and essentially all this is is a big lump of aluminium with two holes drilled in it so that the stress is actually over here and here and of course on the bottom as well. So what we've got then is these things called strain gauges. Now this is why I'm particularly interested in this because many years ago I had to go building a strain gauge amplifier back in 1988. The idea was that it would be able to send signals to a BBC machine which then would be able to speak your weight as it were depending upon what went into the strain gauge. If we look at the strain gauge on this, there's only actually one strain gauge. The thing itself is very cruddy because it's very old. But hopefully we can see underneath there uh, the strain gauge itself. That's this red part here. Probably won't work if I bring it closer. Uh, just too much light on it. But that actually is just a very thin piece of plastic with metal onto it and the metal then comes out to the side. As the thing is bent then these pieces of metal inside here get longer or shorter and therefore they change their resistance and this change in resistance is what is being measured by bending this particular rod. Uh, so I was very interested to see what happened in this, uh, see if I could do anything with it and maybe at some stage if I don't put it back together again I could use this as for my experiments. Very interesting. If we come along then to the actual uh, circuit, we've got these plastic buttons that can be removed to reveal these type of switches. These are quite a nice switch. Uh, 
very tactile, can feel them click in. So how do the switches work? Well, what I've done is to take the switch that didn't work. Here we have it. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in on that. Well, that's not it, but we'll find it. Here we have the switch itself. Uh, not a very good picture, I must admit. Oh, maybe it'll come back. Uh, oh, basically, it has a metal plate on the top, plastic bottom, and two, well, four pins coming out the bottom, which are actually just uh, look to be from the outside like two pieces of metal bent round. We can take the top off by cutting away the plastic blobs, so then the top comes off leaving us this particular piece which is the bit that actually moves if I can find it, where's it gone? There, that's the piece that uh, we press on to move you can see it's upside down so it has the pointer up at the top hopefully inside here then we have this metal disc which is domed to be able to see it, we need to be able to get it out, which might be difficult. Uh, especially as this is the one that didn't work. And I suspect it didn't work because it has crud in it. And th that crud, will that come out now? It's almost out, there we are. On the bottom then. As I suspected, we can see we've got lots of crud. If I can keep my hands still. Lots of crud, which is what stopped it from working. Essentially, these two pieces at the outside go to one of the metal, one pair of metal legs, and the pin on the centre goes to the other. So somehow we've got crud in here, and that has made it so that it doesn't work. If we scrape that off, clean it up, put it back together again. Uh, where are we? Here we have it. Scrape it off, put it back together again. It would probably work, but for the cost of these things, just not worth it. So that's why the uh, thing scale didn't work. Let's have a look a little bit further in then at the circuit board. If we turn it over, what we've got is a single-sided circuit board. Perhaps we ought to zoom out a bit. To look at it. There. Uh, what we've got here then are the three switches along the bottom. The on-off switch, the tear switch. So if you put something onto the scales, you press that and it zeroes the scale. So you might put your pan on, press that, it zeroes it so you're not weighing the pan and then put your ingredients into the pan. Finally, we have the units, which of course is kilograms, grams, etc. Turn it over, what do we find? Can we get it so that it's the right way up or what I think is the right way up? There we are. So essentially what we have are two wires coming in from our battery, positive and negative. We have wires from our string gauge. So we've got four wires, black, blue, white and red. Uh, the white and blue go to S minus and S plus. Uh, the note volts go straight to note volts and the red sort of comes from the process of something under here. Over here we've got a memory chip, this chip. Uh, this chip, uh, what? This chip is, oh, I'll come on to it later, but that's an EE prom which stores the information from the, well, controller here or whatever it is. Uh, the controller as well just drives straight to these connections which are on the LCD. Uh, much more to see here. We can see the bottom of the buttons. We can see that these two here are joined. These two here are joined, but this one goes off. 
this one has no connection on it. Similarly here, this one has no connection and this one goes to the CPU or the microcontroller. These are 0 volts, 0 volts, 0 volts, 0 volts and come to the 0 volts here. We do have some sort of circuit over here which latches the display on or latches the device on which is controlled by the controller. Up at the top here under the wires we've got a voltage regulator, a 3 volt 3, turns down the 9 volt from the cell to 3 volts 3. Here we've got the sort of, well, clock device. Uh, I think it's a ceramic device rather than a crystal. Interesting to note that one of the two capacitors that you'd normally find on a circuit board have been missed off. Perhaps that saves them a fraction of a penny. So can we have a look at the circuit then? Well, let's have a see if we can sort that out. Had a right mess being able to do it. Uh, took, my printer wasn't working very well, so it took a long time to sort of sort out. If we look at the circuit, first of all, let's look at the power. What we've got is the power coming in here. So we have a positive in there, 0 volts in over here. Positive goes straight to the transistor Q1 which is normally held off by this R10 because this is a PMP transistor. When we press the switch down here, this connects this base of the transistor down to ground, switching it on. When it's switched on, it supplies power uh, to this U3, a voltage regulator, which gives us out 3 volts 6, uh, which then is going to control the main circuit. We do, however, get this switch power coming into R20, which for some reason I don't understand. Well, yeah, I don't understand fully. Uh, to make sure that the power stays on when the switch is released, then we get a connection from the CPU or the microcontroller through R13 to this Q2, which is normally held off by this R14. When this goes high, switches on Q2, Q2 then switches on Q1 uh, and holds Q1 on as long as the CPU wants it to stay on. So that's the power. When the switch is pressed again, then I assume that the signal from the CPU goes down, down to ground, tells the CPU that the switch has been pressed again and so it disconnects the power from over here and the whole gizmo switches off. If we look at our EEPROM, which is a 93C46, it has noughts and plus volts coming into it. It also has this org pin. The org pin decides what size of EEPROM it's going to be, whether it's going to be a 64 by 16, which it is in this case because this is held high, or 128 times 8 which it will be if this was low. We have input and output from it. It's a serial device, and these basically come straight from the CPU, uh, which then has a test point here, which we could put a probe on to see what was happening. It also has a clock from the CPU, so we could once again test we're using this test point too, or, and a chip select line, so it has test point three. So it's really well sort of set up for testing, finding out what's going on. Uh, this is sort of the clock circuit, and down here I sort of have some sort of circuit that once again I don't understand. Coming in from the strain gauge, then we have a red, blue, white, and black wire. The black's simple, it just goes straight to note volts. The red wire, I don't know if this is coming from the CPU or going to the CPU. I assume it's coming from. So the CPU only switches on the strain gauge when it needs it. We have a capacitor taking that down to ground. And then, presumably, this is some sort of, uh, some sort of voltage divider circuit. So I've drawn it wrong, really. C3 should have been up there. So it can look at uh, what the voltage is on here 
and determine if it's two thirds or one third on these two. Don't quite understand why they're doing that. Some sort of sensing circuit. So yeah, that's sort of it. It's uh, very interesting. Super to have a go at. Enjoyed the last few days working out what was going on. Obviously the CPU or microcontroller or amplifier or whatever there is in there, I can't actually get to have a look at. It also has these two contacts on, uh, which must have some sort of function, uh, something to do with the white wire coming in. That goes to the CPU directly, but also comes to this slot here, which looks like it's something to do with this transistor here, but I've no idea what that is. Yeah, been very interesting, learnt something about it. Hopefully it'll be information for somebody who's interested in this sort of thing. I only do the videos really for my own purpose so that later on when I've forgotten what I've done I can come back and have a look. But hopefully it'll be useful to somebody else. I think that's it. I think I managed to cover everything. So it's uh, bye now. Bye.